Right now on Daily Planet, we take to the skies in a Sparrowhawk, a gyroplane that manufacturers say is the future of aviation. Hi, welcome to Daily Planet. I'm Jay Ingram. And I'm Natasha Stilwell. Also today, we'll see how brain signals are being used to control a robot's moves. And we talk to a number cruncher about winning at cards. But first, the future of aviation. And checking the oil pressure, and the oil pressure is up. We're going for a trip in a kind of aircraft you may never have seen before, a gyroplane. It has a rotary wing, but this is definitely not a helicopter. Special traffic terminal gyroplane 666 Mike Juliet taxi to runway 30. That rotor isn't powered by a motor except during takeoff. It turns instead by the force of the air flowing through it. That spinning rotor does provide lift. And here we go. And because of that, mid-air stalls aren't a concern. When it lands, it almost floats down to the ground. We believe that the gyroplane is the safest form of flight. It's an aircraft that will not stall. It can land safely from anywhere in the sky without its engine running. And that gives it a huge advantage over helicopters. Though there are times when the helicopter's hovering ability is a real benefit. They are noisier, but three times as expensive to run, and much more complicated to fly than a gyroplane. In a gyroplane, you're safe to fly at any combination of altitude or airspeed as long as you're in level flight. The flight controls are similar to what you'd find on a small fixed-wing aircraft. There's a yoke and a pair of rudder pedals. But whereas in a regular plane, if you go too slow, you won't maintain enough airflow over the wings to stay in motion, a gyroplane just cruises along at about 60 kilometers an hour. The gyroplane was developed in Spain in 1919. It was in production for a while before losing out to the newly developed helicopter. A 45-seat gyroplane was even built and flown in Britain in the late 1950s. Now with the spiraling cost of keeping helicopters in the air and the increasing demand for airport runways, Groen Brothers Aviation is revisiting the concept after spending 20 years perfecting designs. In fact, an earlier craft, the Hawk 4, flew surveillance for the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. Now they're working with DARPA, the U.S. Defense Department's Advanced Research Projects Agency, to develop a high-speed rotor-wing aircraft. It will be a gyrodyne, the difference being that the rotor will be powered by small jets at its tips to achieve vertical takeoff and landing. They call it a technology demonstrator, meaning it can be scaled up. They see it as just the beginning of a new phase of aviation. There are plans for commuter and cargo gyrodynes, even versions for fighting forest fires. Right now, 40% of all runway operations at our major airports are commuter distances, 300 miles or less. And most of those are small airplanes, 50 passenger or less. And yet, we have terrible overcrowding at these airports. What we believe can happen, and is a gyrodyne, a commuter airliner that we call a gyroliner that can eliminate that 40% of runway operations that are commuter distances and mostly commuter sized airplanes and have them operate from the ramp so that they're not having to tie up the runways. You know, we hear over and over again about crowded airspace. The airspace isn't crowded, look up. How many times does it take for an airplane to fly over your head? I mean, we're right next to an airport and you'd sit here long enough to have a stiff neck before an airplane flies by. It's the ground that's crowded. It's the runway that is in limited supply. But until the gyrodynes are in the air, there's the two-seater Sparrowhawk. Built using aluminum and fiberglass, it's powered by a Subaru 160 horsepower car engine using premium unleaded gas that'll keep it in the air for about three hours. The Sparrowhawk is sold as a kit with instructions through a network of 33 dealers worldwide takes about 400 hours to assemble it. You need a pilot's license and plus some extra training to fly it. There's lots of interest in the Sparrowhawk from law enforcement and border patrol agencies. 
That's because it can serve as a low-cost, highly reliable surveillance platform. In law enforcement, the Sparrowhawk acts as a force multiplier. One aircraft in the air is the equivalent of six to ten patrol cars on the ground. So it's very good for police departments, sheriff's departments, and local law enforcement. It is going to come flat up to about the point where we want to land. Then I'm going to reduce the power and tip the tail back and just pull the stick all the way back. And you'll see we stop rather quickly. We didn't even make it past the end of the numbers. There's no wonder it's so highly praised. It requires only a few feet of runway space to land. And after landing, you can drive right into the hangar, like parking your car. But it's easy enough to pull it that uh, one person can just position it and move it around in the, in the hangar really easy. For pilots longing to experience the pure joy of flight, this is a dream. When I dream about flying, this is how you should fly. To be able to go as slow as you want, to be able to turn when you want, you should be able to stop on a dime. You should be able to go left or right anytime you want. It really is e and e be easy to fly. You shouldn't have to think about it to just be able to do it. And that's the way the gyroplane is for me. It feels like you're, you're dreaming and you're Superman flying around. That's, that's the fun way to fly. And for President and CEO David Groen, it's the product of a special vision. This wild, that lives within all entrepreneurs is this bizarre ability to see the future that hasn't yet come and to believe into it and to believe it and to believe it can be done and even more importantly to believe they can do it themselves. You know, it began with the, the Wright brothers, a, a couple of brothers who who believed it could be done and were willing to pay the price. So us screwballs that have this ability to see the future we can see it because we know that we can have a hand in creating it.